Thank you for your analysis. That's a really great insight for us. And the other question is like the role of the Workers Communist Party of EUM in this re in this revolution, especially because I know there's a like before this incident happened because I have been uh, following most of the the PPI members since 2018. So I know there's a like they have been struggling all of all the time these years since the 2018 and 19 since I uh, remember. And I'm pretty sure they have been struggling more than like long before that. Pretty sure about that one. So like. What is the role of Workers Communist Party of Iran in this revolution? Because I like last week I noticed a statement from the WPI for a call for general strike. So that yeah. one is a really great initiative. So like, and when I meet some of the Iranian student here, like when I talk about them with the communist, like communist kind of like narrative, community analysis, and left wing public politics. They always mention me about the WPI. They never mention me about other different groups. They only mention about the WPI. They always present about Mensa Hackmack. They always say in that. And sometimes even themselves had to like uh had to fight or had to fight back or had to push back against the Western left when it comes to the Islamophobia or something like that you know, when it comes to the political Islam. So my question is like, what is the role that the WPI is playing at the moment in Iran? Yeah, thank you for asking this question. I think it's a very important one. Like I think the Working Communist Party is the leading uh, sort of movement among the left uh, political parties right now. We are the biggest basically, like you know, in terms of like members, um, well, like, you no, know, we have manifesto, we have TV channels, uh, and we have like members all around the world. So I think when someone talks about the Iranian lefties, worker communism or like worker communist party of Iran comes at first. And we also, we have like a different parties, which I respect them. And I think they're doing a great job, but I think we are the best. <laughs> if you ask me, like, of course, like, you know, what's happening inside the country, like, you no, know, I cannot say what's. What, what we've done because like there's like you know people inside so for security purposes i cannot say like you know the connection we have and like the things that we're doing but um if you ask about like you know what's the role i think the discourses of the of the like an ongoing revolution it's very left and it's very affected by um the worker communist party of iran's manifesto i can give you an example like 30 years ago uh, like one of our members known as Mahin Alipur, uh, she burned her job at the very center of Stockholm. And she, and after that, there was like a statement saying like, you know, burning hijab should be like, you know, the first step of the women's revolution in Iran. And then like those days, everyone say like hijab is not a big deal. We have like, you know, different issues like, you know, equal rights and uh, e e equal rights in terms of like salaries for the women. These sort of issues like you know were much more important among lefties like anytime say like hijab they say like no hijab is not really important hijab belongs to the like you know hijab issue belongs to like you know more like rich people in society working class doesn't have any problem with the hijab but we say like hijab is the most important issue regarding the women's uh regarding the re uh, women's uh like you know uh, movements and soon as soon as hijab is removed the women's revolution will start and it happened like as i said like you know, a couple of years ago like the revolutionary girl they they started like you know removing their hijab and now there is like you know awesome footages of the young generation of the iranians burning hijab on the street so we we created these discourses like you no know, women's revolution is it's something that mansur hikmat said once that the upcoming revolution is a women women's revolution we have a TV channel. We cover all the like a protest in the world. In the West, we have like a different petitions talking to the government. We're trying to like you know close down the embassies and the mosques specifically, like you know the blue mosques in Hamburg. Uh, they are we are very close to close that 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 place because of uh, all the like you know protest and like you no know, uh, the, the, the the petitions. Uh, like there the, the are like so many people against that place because they are spying on the like German citizens and they promoting Islamism and they support Hezbollah in Germany. So there are like, you know, like so many people after all these uh, activities we had 
uh, are agreed that that place should be closed and we are very close to close that places um, uh, and different are, are, are and different like you know, other like you know petitions and uh, negotiations negotiations with the government in the west so they can like you know put the islamic regime on their pressure to recognize the women's right to recognize the human rights in the country and uh, basically, we try to radicalize the revolution as much as I can, as much as we can, and um, trying to downfall the Islamic regime and empower uh, like a social uh, socialist republic in Iran if the people like it. That's how. That's what we fight for. But if you're asking like, you know, what we're doing? We have, a, as I said, we have a TV channel. We are active in internet. We talk to the politicians. We radicalize the uh, the revolution and we create discourse for the people who would like to downfall the Islamic regime in Iran. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's really important stuff in here because like when we say atheism or when we say ex-Muslim, so that is a thing that also happens in Burma as well and especially in the West too. So when we say atheism, when we say ex-Muslim, they think of us as the liberal who always want to attack the religion like blatantly. Mm. But apparently most of the ex-Muslim, especially the ex-Muslims, are from the left-wing communist kind of like political mostly. spectrum. Mostly, not all mostly. of them, but mostly. Yeah, not all of them, but mostly. Because it yeah. also happens in here, like when I came here like to Australia in 2018 and 2019, I had, what I had to do is I had to call all of my like Pakistani Bangladeshi friends like who are ex-Muslim and communists. I have to set up the Zoom meeting with the Western left and tell them that listen to the organic ex-Muslim voices and this is how you learn. And that was a good deal because I the international that I'm a part of, they listen to me, they listen to the comrades that I introduced them with. So and finally they understand that they have been too much privileged and they have been delusional and they accept our analysis. They are like, okay, we were privileged. We we're sorry about supporting the like Muslim Brotherhood in the things and stuff like that. As you know, most of the Trotskyists supported the uh, like Muslim Brotherhood in the Egypt revolution. So that was a really shameful movement. I suggested to them. And then right now that is a really great movement. They, sh they shift back to us. They have supported us again, but as you know, in the old days, like let's say in, in a decade ago, they think whenever they hear the sound, like whenever they hear the label called new atheism, they are saying they are racist, they are Islamophobic, you know, they are reactionary. They always say that right now they are thinking before doing that kind of thing. So the, I think that is a good move as well. And then, yeah. and that is also like attributed to the WPI and its movement, because I noticed that like, whenever the secularism is threatened, even in the West, WPI always standard for the secularism, especially in that France conflict and everything like that. Like I noticed that WPI always stands for secularism. So like, so why do you think the secularism important for the Iranian uh, revolution and Iranian government? So like, what is the outlook? Well, there's like when there's a revolution, actually, you're always trying to like, you know, be the, in the position uh, that like you are against the, like, you know, the current government and the current government is not secular. The current government is Islamic. There's like the, the, the official law is Sharia law and Sharia, by the way, that these mullahs and imams see it. Um, so secularism in that term can be a motivating motto for the young generation of the people who would like to have change. Um, secularism is important because it, I think according to the previous experience of the other countries, it can guarantee or like mostly guarantee the uh, citizens' rights. So just look what's happening in Turkey, specifically before Erdogan. Like Erdogan is just like, it's a threat, I think, to all these secular uh, traditions as in, in Turkey. But if you compare Turkey, for example, with Iran, like citizens of Turkey has much more rights, yeah, than the Iranians. And they are very close to each other. You know, we have like similar histories, 
similar movements, uh, same language, almost same language, like, you know, Turkish and Persian are very close to each other. Like, you know, we have so many Iranians who talk Turkish in Iran and so many Iranians talk Persian in Turkey. But if you compare these two, for example, uh, Turkey as a secular country is it, much further for the citizens rather than Iran as an Islamic country. Yeah. So there's two points, uh, two most important points in terms of secularism. First of all, it can be a, like, you know, very interesting, um, motivating motto and goal for the people who would like to have change with the, or for the people who are on the street and fighting against the government. And also we can say like secular countries uh, can support and protect the human rights much more than the other examples like Islamic states or some other things. So that's how I see uh, the, that's, that's how I see um, the importance of secularism for a country like Iran. Yeah, thank you for that one. 